I guess I'm just going to start this right off just about how happy you were that you got to get an opportunity to be the offensive coordinator after a few scuffles with Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's it's a great opportunity for me. Uh, being being familiar with Mike from from our time in Houston, and then being able to kind of uh, you know watch from afar, being over there and seeing how uh, competitive his teams were, and see basically all, all the cornerstones uh, of the organization, how hard they play, how physical they are. Um, it was all things that that you know, as you sit and you watch somebody on tape, uh, it's something you want to be a part of. So um, very fortunate and, and very excited for the opportunity. You got the opportunity being already in the building to see Ryan Tannehill. What are your thoughts on him? How can he help this organization? Yeah, Ryan, uh, you know, speaking on last year and in, in, in the time I was able to work with him, he's a great pro. Um, you know, he's, he checks every box in terms of what you're looking for uh, from that position and be able, being able to come in and lead um, and, and, and really, uh, you know, be, be the driving force behind the offense there uh, when he's on the field. So, um, you know, excited to uh, continue to, to work with Ryan. And, and um, like I said, the experience I had with him last year was great. Um, you know, got to make sure that, that we stress consistency is the big thing. Uh, I think you can go and, and look at a number of games last year where uh, we came out and, and, you know, one that comes to mind real quick is the Giants game where we were, came out like gangbusters. I think we went up 24-0 um, and then we weren't able to put together a whole game. So really stressing the, the ability to, to, to stay level-headed um, and, and, and just, you know, make sure that we're consistent in everything that we do uh, and, and, and every day that we're in the building, not just on Sundays. So, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all, all the days of the week when we come in there to work, that we're consistent, we're level-headed, uh, we make sure that we're doing everything we can to, to go out there and, and be good. Is part of being more consistent, being less predictable? I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, I, I didn't think we were predictable last year. I think there's some times where, um, you know, certain games, certain things, uh, weather, um, you know, people you have available, things along those lines, uh, you know, there, 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 there are a lot of elements that go into to predict, predictability or perceived predictability. Um, so I wouldn't say that we were predictable last year. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, one, one of the things that we want to do as an offense is, is we want to be versatile. So whether it ends up being uh, multiple personnel groupings, uh, multiple formations, playing in multiple tempos, just doing things to try to keep people off balance. So, you know, that's what we're going to look to do moving forward. Um, you know, we, we want to put our guys in the best position possible. Uh, I, I didn't, but, um, you know, again, like I said, uh, there, there, there are a lot of things that go into into calling a game, um, and so you know, last year was last year. But moving forward, I can tell you what we're going to do and what we're going to try to do, and, and how we're going to build this offense. Yeah, I think that's tough to answer right now, just because I don't know if we know exactly what our team's going to look like. So, um, again, the the big thing that that you know how I was raised and, and how, how I kind of want to uh, build this thing is, is uh, we want to be versatile. So we want to have versatile players that can do multiple things from multiple formations, from m multiple personnel groupings, um, and, and, and be out there and, and give the illusion of being complex where, uh, we, you know, the concepts may not change a, a whole ton, but with the illusion of, of being complex and, and putting our guys in a, in a position to go out and execute, uh, you know, at a high level. How do you see it working like having yourself? Not having too many chefs in the kitchen. Yeah, I, I think there's a fine line between that and, and between making sure that you're being inclusive and, and getting ideas from everybody. Um, being able to, you know, and anybody that, that has a seat at the table in that offensive staff room is, is an accomplished coach. Um, and, and it's, it, you know, the way that we're built right now, it's, it's unique with Justin and with Charles and got guys that have had different experiences in, in different organizations and different offensive systems, uh, you know. So being able to pull different ideas, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not concerned about having too many cooks in the kitchen. As the coordinator, it's my job to, to, to make sure that uh, everything we do is streamlined. 
um, and, and, and we're not allowing just off the wall ideas and things along those lines. But uh, with, you know, with the quality of coaches that we have in the offensive room, we're going to encourage ideas and we're going to encourage people to come in. And, and if they if they think something's going to help us score points, I'm all ears for it. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll talk about kind of what my schedule. If you want to, if you want to get into that last year and, and how I was involved uh, early on in the week, I, I'd make sure that I I give everything I could to Todd in terms of uh, you know information on the opponent. Um, uh, so when he gets into the office on Monday after calling a game, um, you know he's he's got an idea as to what to expect when he turns on the film. Um, so from there, you know, was involved with with being able to come up with some of the the, the pass game ideas, and then along with some of the third down and red area ideas. So, um, you know, uh, last year for me, I, I was here to to try and serve those guys and, and give any of those and any of those guys on that staff and anything they asked for, whether it was me, you know, running around like a whatever you want to call me, you know, during the during the, the scout teams and, and, and trying to give the best look I could to those guys and just really trying to do anything I could to help us win. Outside zones are going to be foundational for your offense. Are you changing terminology much, things like that? I mean, yeah, we're, we're, there's going to be an element of outside zone. Um, uh, in, in as far as ter terminology, there's going to be some carryover and there's going to be some things that are different. Uh, the last thing that we want to do is, is come in and stunt the growth of some of the guys, Traylon, uh, Chig, you know, Malik, some of those guys that, that were younger, Nick, um, and, and just completely change things ju just to say that we changed them. So uh, the things that we were efficient at and the things that, that are, that are um, you know, worth keeping, if you will, we're, we're going to do that. And if we feel like we need to make an adjustment with something else, uh, we'll make sure that, that we make the proper adjustment. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, you know, yeah, I, you know, that's a big part of of what we're doing right now. Um, and like I said, being able to start that process with the new guys and kind of going through and seeing seeing what they're what, what they've done in the past at different places, uh, you know, because because a lot of times when you come up with these ideas and, and you think you've had this great unique idea, somebody else has already had it and has experienced the growing pains with it. So, being able to go through and make sure that we're vetting all the ideas and, and figuring out. You know, just like we said, what we want to keep, what we want to add, and making sure that, that when everybody gets in the building, um, when we hand them that playbook, it's clean and, and it's got exactly what we want and, and what we want to be in it. Yeah, um, you know, for, for right now, uh, when we get in, typically, you know, guys are in earlier. So um, we take the mornings basically for whenever, whenever anybody gets in the building. Uh, until lunchtime to make sure that, that we're handling that, uh, you know, playbook portion of it. And then in the afternoon, giving the coaching, coaching staff time to evaluate different players and, and make sure that, that we've got a really uh, a great idea as to, you know, who we want to bring into our building. You mentioned Chig. You said at the end of the season, you felt like he's kind of just scrapping the service. What did you see from him last year? How much more involved could you see moving forward? Yeah, you know, Chig, Chig did a great job of making plays when the ball found his way. Um, so whether it was the, the catch in Indy, you know, he, he had a couple of big catches for us. Uh, uh, the one in Jacksonville, I believe, he, like when the ball found him, he caught it and, and he was good with the ball in his hand. So um, he did a great job of learning, first of all, what it takes to be a professional. Um, and, and again, I think that, you know, that's a transition for, for every rookie when they when they come into the NFL. Um, and, and yeah, we're going to look to continue to, to grow his skills and, and his abilities so, so we can utilize them more. Yeah, um, you know, I think anytime you're going into a situation with an established quarterback, no matter who it is, uh, you want to make sure that, that the comfort level with them is, is paramount, um, especially, again, when they're out there pulling the trigger, uh, they need to make sure that, that they feel good about it. Um, and so, you know, again, with, with the Ryan and quarter, in, in that quarterback position in general, ju just making sure that, you know, we're seeing the game through the same set of eyes. That that uh, you know, no matter if we call one thing, you know, a little bit differently this year, uh, the term like the plays are the plays. 
Um, so making sure that, again, the, the big thing is, is seeing the game the same way, him understanding that, the, you know, that player at that position, understanding that, that we want to, you know, we're calling a play for a certain reason, and we want to make sure that he understands what we're trying to get, uh, you know, out of certain play calls. How would you describe yourself as a play caller? How would you describe yourself as a play caller? Um, yeah, I think I think the flow of the game is important. Um, you know, I learned I learned early on when I was calling plays uh, that you can go in with the best game plan and, and with you know, hey, we're going to run the ball 30 times today, and then you get into halftime and you're like, we shouldn't run the ball 30 times today. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there, there's there's a. Uh, the flow of the game is huge, and you got to be able to figure it out figure it out quick. Because if you if you wait until halftime, or if you wait until the third quarter to make an adjustment, a lot of times that ends up being too late. Um, so being able to adjust to what we see, hopefully the game plan that we've put together is is working, um, and and you know there's not just a complete overhaul, uh, but in you know break glass and break glass in case of emergency. Um, sometimes you you know you have to make a 180. And I know Mike referenced the the Houston game that we had in in 21. Or that was not the plan, but whatever we had in the first half wasn't working, and we needed to to, to change if we wanted to give ourselves a, a chance to win the game. So, um, you know, making sure that 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 I have a good feel for for the flow of the game, and then being aggressive when when it makes sense to be aggressive. Um, I think there's a there's a fine difference between being reckless and being aggressive. Um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to be myself. So, um, you know, it, football is supposed to be fun. If, if it's, if it's not like it's too hard, it's too hard to do what we do if, if you're not enjoying yourself and, and, and not trying to get the most out of your players. So, uh, you know, I'm going to be myself, and if that means that one time I'm yelling or I'm a little bit more reserved, depending on who I'm talking to, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's crucial to make sure that again you're doing everything you can to reach individual to to reach each individual player uh, the best way possible. Tim, how limiting was the offensive line last year? I'm sorry. How limiting was the offensive line against the injuries of performance, and how critical is it to that? Yeah, I mean, obviously you want to make sure that. Uh, you're able to keep your five best out there for, for as many snaps as possible. Um, I wouldn't say that uh, anything we did was limited. Um, you know, are we looking to, to play better? I think, yeah, but I, I would believe everyone here in this building, if you ask them a question about do, you, do we need to play better, everyone's going to say yeah. So do we need to make improvements? Absolutely. But, um, you know, you look at the, the growth that, that we had from, you know, I'm thinking of Nick just at the, at the right tackle position coming in and, and doing a good job, and you could see the growth throughout the season. Um, and that's just something that we're going to look to continue to build on. What do you think Malik is, and what do you envision him being able to do? Yeah, um, you know, Malik's doing a great job coming into the building every day, having a good routine right now. Uh, you know, he's, he's got such a, he's got, you know, he's so charismatic. He comes in, pops his head in with his big old smile, and um, it, it, it's exciting to see him in here building that routine um, and, and, you know, doing what it takes to be a professional quarterback. So, you know, we'll, we'll see where, where everything ends up, but uh, we're excited with the, the process, or excuse me, with the progress that, that he looks like he's making right now. As, as of right now, it looks like Traylon Burks would be probably your lead receiver. What will it take for him to mature into that role outside of actually being available? Well, that's the big one, is, is making sure that he's available and he's on the field as, as much as possible. Um, but yeah, just, just being out there and, and being consistent. That was the one thing, I, I think, when, uh, when, when he was on the field. Uh, he was he was pretty productive. Just thinking of the goal ball that he caught against Jair in, in Green Bay, like that, that's a top five corner in the league that, that he went and beat and, and won and you know was able to, to make an explosive play for us. You look at the physical catcher, he he ended up you know making it in Philadelphia. Like he took a shot, held on to the ball. Um, so he's he's showing all the traits that that we loved when he came out. Now it's just a matter of him being consistent and doing it day in and day out. For guys like him and Chig, those type of you know do it all players. Like how do you approach? Packaging plays and making sure these guys can, can get as many touches as possible. Yeah, again, it's all about you know. A lot of times, it's it's dictated on the on the individual player. So, um, what do they do well? 
how can we how can we create different matchups um, on different players, and then you know once we're able to figure that out, putting them in that spot as many times as possible and, and letting them work. So uh, for those guys, you know, with the unique skill sets, uh, you know, it, it's 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 a good challenge to have to try and find different ways to get them the ball and, and to, to get them matched up uh, in favorable matchups. But that's why we get paid. Yeah, I mean, we want any time we take the field, we, we want to be able to score as many points as possible. So, obviously, that's one. Two is making sure that we're playing the game the way that, that Coach Rabel wants us to play it. Um, you know, it's not it's not just an offense versus an offense. It, 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 it's a team sport. So there are certain times where we're going to have to play a game a certain way to put our to put ourselves in a position to win it. So making sure that that we're doing that. Um, and then, and then again, just want to continue to be versatile in, in, in how we try to attack teams. Uh, want, to, want to be able to attack people vertically. Want, want to make them defend every blade of grass. So on every snap, as many times as we can. Um, so, you know, for us, that's going to be the big thing here moving forward and as we get going here and, and just continuing to find different ways to stress the defense. Second half, real issue in terms of scoring out. What's your philosophy about half times and, and adjustments and ability to kind of yeah, again, I, I think each game's a little bit different with that. Um, you know, uh, there's there's different ways to do it. You can go in holding something until the second half, but a lot of times if, if you think it's going to work, you know, and, and you think it's going to be a good play for you, it's hard to hold on to it for, for that long. So, uh, again, a lot of times the game dictates that. We want to make sure that if we're doing something that, that's efficient, and that's given us success that we want to do it more. Um, and if there's something that, that's not working, uh, maybe we look, you know, somewhere else on the, on, on the play sheet. I know that, you know, seems elementary, seems simple, but a lot of times, uh, you know, that's what it is. Yeah, similar to kind of what we're talking about with the offensive line. Uh, getting, you know, improving, right? I, I think everybody wants to get bigger, stronger, faster. So um, definitely look to, to find guys that can help us, you know, score the ball and, and stretch the field. Um, but again, I, I, I would imagine that's a pretty common response here. Tim, your general philosophy in today's NFL, do you think the team needs to throw the ball more than the Titans did last season just to be successful? I mean, uh, Again, it's such a it's such a unique question because it's it's based upon so many things. Um, you know, if if you're able to build a huge lead running the football, like you're going to run the ball a lot. If if you know it's if you're in two minute situations, you're going to throw the ball more. So there's so many factors that go into it as opposed to just calling a run, calling a run. It, I, I don't think it's fair to say that you know to to, to give an answer to that question. Sure. Yeah. I mean, again, being being efficient throwing the ball, being efficient protecting the quarterback, being efficient catching the football, and, and being explosive when you have the ball in your hands. That, absolutely, we want we want to improve in all those areas. Um, so again, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna find ways to, to work that with our players this this off season. Um, and again, when when we hit the grass and when the games start to count, uh, we want to be as efficient as, as we can in both running the football and throwing the ball. Um, I think we're still evaluating, you know, again, you know who the top prospects are, you know who, you know, I guess those top 100 players, we see that all the time. We see that on the bottom tickers of everything, the top 150. Um, so those guys, you kind of know, but I'm looking forward to getting those, um, those later guys, those, uh, again, I think one of the gentlemen just asked in the um, presser about late round success. Um, and in San Francisco, we were able to hit and fill out our roster. You look on the back end to build and add depth, but we were able to find starters. So that's the portion I'm really looking forward to getting to know. What have you learned about injuries and the plague that's gone on the last two years and, <laughs> and how you might approach uh, ending it? You make that sound so bad, but yet so easy to just, oh, just do this and the guys won't get hurt. It's a, it's a violent game. Right, so injuries happen. Everybody has their season where you got to deal with and you go through the injuries, and there's no rhyme or reason as to why, you know, and, and that's just in all truthfulness. And in 2020, we were decimated by injuries in San Francisco, 
we don't know why. It just happened. So, again, we just got to uh, continue to evaluate all things, all processes, and figure out the best way to keep these guys healthy um, and keep them available for Sunday. You like your spot at, you like your spot at number 11? Are you interested in moving up? Do you like more picks? I, I know it's a ways <laughs> off, but uh, what do you think? Well, we're always open for business. Um, all the guys, you know, you got my number, call me. But, uh, no, it's always about um, just being open um, to try to continue to add value. Um, and so we'll listen and field every call and kind of see what comes from it. You mentioned evaluating all the positions, but are there some years where you're more attuned to the quarterbacks than other years? And would you say that this year, because you have to think down the line at that position, that you're more – Again, again, because of the nature of the position, I think you go into every year making sure you know that class from top to bottom. Um, again, I'm, again, I hate to keep leaning on San Francisco, but who knew Brock Purdy was going to be, you know, Brock Purdy at the last pick of the draft? You didn't go into it. You had just taken Trey, you know, the year before. You had Jimmy. Who who thought of taking a quarterback in the seventh? It's just you knew the class, and it's just something that happened. So I think every year you got to go into it knowing that position group from top to bottom. You guys, what do you think about Jamico Ryan's and his opportunity? Uh, what do you think he's going to do? What are your thoughts on him? I think I think uh, Miko is going to be great. Um, one thing I know about D'Amico, he is a great man. You know, above all, he's a great leader. And I think when you have that about you mixed in with his knowledge of the game, I think it's a recipe for success. Um, great family friend. I see him like my little brother. Uh, I always root for him, except for twice a year. Um, and if we need, you know, playoff help, <laughs> you know, I'll root against him. But uh, D'Amico's going to be, he's going to be just fine. Um, can it be fixed? Yeah, it can, it can be done. Um, and we're going to, you know, work hard and, and try to do it. But again, it's a process and it's a process of finding the best five and being able to put not only the best five out on the field, but having those backups, you know, behind them with versatility that are able to step in. And like you said, that, that cohesive unit, keeping that cohesion going. This team has really shown up. I think, um, you know, it starts with, and again, it's scheme based, right? You know, so we've been predominantly an outside zone running scheme. So having guys that fit those traits and that can excel at those traits. And, you know, at the end of the day is can you block your man? You know, can you keep your man off our quarterback? Can you keep, you know, your man away from our ball carrier? And, uh, you know, and we'll, we'll cross that and get there when, when it's time. This team has shown a real preference for big receivers with few exceptions. Ryan seems to like them. Mike seems to like them. You envision you guys sticking with that, or is yeah, of course, and you know, you as as opposed to being big, because this is a, a big man, grown man sport. You know, you also want to continue to add speed, add explosiveness, and um, you know, guys that can that do things with, with the ball in their hands. You mentioned the analytics example with Elijah Mitchell. With this building, it hasn't really been as much of an emphasis in the previous regime. Is that something that you would like to ramp up and use more? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we're going to do that. And, you know, that was a part of me hiring Chad Brinker, you know, as the assistant GM. He has that background as, as well as a scouting background. So, again, we want to be a, a full service, you know, front office and have be able to not only trust our eyes, but trust the data um, as well. And while we're here, I got some flack from, you know, I talked about the um, Elijah Mitchell and talked about D'Amico and talked about Demetrius, but I left off one person, uh, Mike McDaniels. He actually made the tape that everybody. So, Mike, I hope you see that. I hope we're good now. Uh, Mike's changed. You know, Mike went from a background guy to now he wants all the credit, so I'm giving <laughs> Mike all his credit right now. Have you made any thoughts? Oh, damn. Um, you know, we had a good talk with Taylor um, in the moment of his release. I think the focus right now for Taylor is getting healthy um, and seeing where he is at the end of the process and making a decision on his future. And I think we'll cross that bridge once he's healthy. With a guy like Bud, like Dupree, like how do you, the stats haven't really been there, but how do you manage to like, wager the return on the investment versus his presence in the defense? So Bud is a guy that I don't have any, you know, experience with. Um, you know, obviously he was signed and um, here under the previous regime. And so Bud is another guy on the team that I need to get to know. 
Um, and so I, I understand the question and know, you know, everybody wants to know about his future. But, you know, Bud is Bud is on our team and Bud is a guy that we're going to continue to evaluate. I mean, we're going to we're going to make moves as needed. Um, you know, again, free agency's coming up. We got to be able to sign players to kind of help us move forward. And again, it's I, I continue to talk about the puzzle. You know, we got to continue to move those pieces around to create that picture at the end. Is Ben Jones is he healthy now from the recovery from the concussion? Do you expect him to be your center going forward? Well, Ben's uh, Ben's healthy, um, and I think um, you know Ben is an older player that he's you know still working through some things. So you know, with Ben, Ben's a pro. And he's a pro's pro, and so we're going to continue to let him get healthy and then to go from there. Rand, there's, with running backs, there's kind of a trend of, you know, having guys having multiple guys that can kind of carry the load. And obviously it's, it's Derek's team in terms of being the running back. But do you envision having maybe more stronger depth at that position where you could have like a one, two, one, two, three punch? So I didn't know where you were going. When I'm sensitive when we talk about running backs, being a former running back. I didn't know where you were going there. Um, no, I mean that's a again that's a position that you want to continue to uh, you know grow at um, you know Haskins and those guys you know they just need opportunities um, to prove um, who they are and what they're worth and I think those guys are talented. Um, again, running back is one of those positions you got to get touches to kind of show who you are and what you can do. Um, so I don't think it's fair to say that we don't have a one-two punch. It's just those guys just need more opportunities. Two more coming into your office, you know, meeting them as they as they're in the building. Anybody kind of stood out in those conversations or found out something about a guy that you did that surprised you or you didn't know about him? That's a good one. Um trying to think. Um I have some some really good conversations with Malik. Um they've gone all gone well. Um Brewer is one that, that sticks out. Um Man, we talked from old school cars, pickup trucks to, to everything. So it was a cool conversation. Um, again, all the guys that have come in, you know, have been great. And again, it's it's nothing job related, performance related. We're just talking to get to know each other as as guys, you know, and, and I, that's a big part for me because as much time and as much effort as we've we put into knowing the player, I feel it's as important to know the person. Right, because they're people more than they are players, and so that's really what it's all about. And everybody that I've spoken to, I've felt like I built a good rapport with. What Jeff Fisher said you're you really good at painting pictures of players and offering comps. Um, do you agree with that assessment? <laughs> and and what makes you good at? It? Why is it important to maybe draw comps? So I appreciate that, Fish. Um, you know, it's kind of again drawing a comp kind of helps paint the picture. Right for someone who may not understand exactly what I'm saying, but if I can tell you, oh, this guy reminds me of, then you can kind of see that vision because you've seen that work. And that just comes from, you know, having grown up in the game, but then just a lot of film study and knowing, you know, the pro side of it. And um, I think that just helps, again, just bring that picture to light because when you're presenting your report, you're the author, you're the painter, you're trying to show what your vision of that player is and any any stroke of the brush that can help do that, you got to use it. What do you think about Malik kind of evaluating him after his rookie season? What's your kind of message to him to try to keep getting better? So the one thing that I talked to Malik about um, was just continue to grow as a quarterback. And that's not just throwing the ball. That's not, you know, all these different things. But quarterback is so much more mental than it is physical. Um, and I think, uh, you know, from that standpoint, I just, you know, talked to him about being able to lead the locker room, being able to have that presence and continuing just to, you know, reach out to some of the greats in our game and guys that are helping him. So we've been able to, to connect and he's reached out to, uh, you know, other quarterbacks in the league to kind of serve as mentors for him, which kind of shows, you know, who he is as a person and where he sees himself and where he wants to go. The, uh, the dynamic of working with Rand during this process, he says that, you know, he wants to bring in players that fit your style and what you want. I mean, how, how important is that? And if there's a difference of opinion on a player or a move, who breaks the tie? Well, I think that that relationship and, uh, has continued to grow and develop and, you know, excited um, about bridging uh, his staff, uh, the, the, you know, him and Chad are new and a lot of everybody else that's been here, our staff from the coaching standpoint, um, have loved those communications about starting free agency and now with the draft and and where we're headed and heading to putting our coaches out on pro day. So you know, that relationship is is only getting stronger and building. Um, 
And, and I think whether it's my vision or his vision, this, our team and organization's vision, that's that's our goal is to try to bring in you know players that you know, we always talk about it that are winners, that love football, that have a level of speed and violence and versatility, um, you know, and are willing to put the team first. So um, that that that's all we're trying to do. How's that, how that uh, been in that uh, you know process as you're getting into the evaluation of prospects or free agents and everything? That interaction with Rand, how's that? Been? Great. It's been great. I think that uh, it's been open. We've been able to listen to our coaches, listen to our scouts, and then you know provided a, a ample opportunity for him and I to discuss and. Um, you know, try to come up with a plan, and that plan will, you know, continue to change throughout, you know, the off season with, with free agency just a couple weeks away. He told us about uh, you guys all, or your assistants, giving him like twenty play reels. Like this, mm-hmm. this is what I really am looking for. How much does that kind of really put it into action? His his finding new people that do what you want. Well, I think that that's great opportunity, um, one for our coaches and in our staff to go back and make sure and think and look um, how, how we want to identify players, whether that be at the tight end position and saying, man, he's, he's not a mauler, you know, let's, let's just look for somebody else. Or saying, this is what's out there. These are really good players. we got to find ways to, to have them help us in our offense. So that's, a, that's been a really good project for our coaches just to say, hey, how, how do we want these players to look on the edge? How do we want them to look inside? How do we want these safeties to look? How do we want these uh, offensive linemen to look? And we talked about being able to protect the quarterback. So it's been, I, I think, a great exercise, not only for looking for play style and skill set, but also just um, just making sure that we're good with, from a fundamental standpoint and a philosophy standpoint as we evaluate players. So I, I was excited to be able to ask our coaches to do that and, and have them take that feedback and, and be able to study it and put it on the system. He said he's relied on you, you and the assistant coaches a lot to assess the current roster as far as who can do what and you know who maybe was asked to do something they weren't quite good at. How has that uh, process gone in, in terms of uh, him coming to you and, and asking for your opinions on those? Well, I mean, it's that's what I would hopefully expect throughout our organization is that uh, two sides that have to, you know, come to an agreement on adding players or making decisions on players. Uh, that's part of our daily conversation. This isn't, you know, these aren't meetings that have to be scheduled. These are conversations that happen. You know, we, we share a wall and, and all, you know, our offices are, you know, I can either walk around one side or I can walk outside and get to it the other way. So they're easy conversations. Um, and the, those are the beginning of many, many conversations about the roster. If your mindset might build around Ryan, be as good as possible around Ryan with the offense, or would you be open to possibly if a quarterback in the draft blows you away and drafting a quarterback? I, I, I am going to say this for every player. I'm, a, I'm as open to adding great players to our roster, uh, whether that's at quarterback, that's at running back, that's at defensive line, um, corner. You know, I, I, I do – uh, believe that we have, you know, we, we've got some some needs and some holes. I've, I've I've told you that. I've asked them to look for players that have an element of speed, uh, violence, and versatility, and that that's that, that's what I want to look for and look for offensive linemen that can that can protect the quarterback. You know, whether that's Ryan, whether that's Malik, that's Josh Dobbs, whoever that may end up being. Um, th- those are things that. You know we have to do a better job at. That's being comes packaged differently at wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Generally gone big. Yeah. And, and if big and fast is super mm-hmm. valuable. So if you're drafting that, receiver, that's not bad. If you're drafting receiver later and to get the speed, you have to go smaller. Might you change tactics? There? Well, I think that um, you're looking for how they are able to produce with the skill set that that they have, and you know, big and fast is is a great place to start. Um, knowing that we need to get faster throughout our roster. Um, but there's a couple ways to, to, to skin a cat and making sure that, you know, you're not, you know, if you come off that model a little bit, there has to be some other things. If, if a guy doesn't have 34-inch arms and you're like, well, we'd really like to have that, you know, are, are there other skill sets that they um, exhibit and, and can they, then they function and do their job? Um, 
outside of that. So, you know, we, we know kind of where we need to be with that, with that position uh, in the wide receiver room. Um, and then we'll just kind of carve out, see where we end up in free agency, see where we end up in the draft. And then, you know, obviously as, as players become available, there's different opportunities to add players to your roster. Can you mention offensive line, Mike? I mean, how big a challenge are you to potentially have as many as could have five, Jimmy. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not into prediction business. I don't know, but I know that we're going to find guys that uh, exhibit the way that we want to play within the, you know, the framework of, of the rules, and that they finish and they value uh, staying between their man and a quarterback, and that they they fish, finish longer than the guy with the ball. Um, they, there's a level of durability. They can stay on their feet, um, and, and they can and they can learn and they can understand what we have to do. Uh, and, and there's some instincts there. How tough is that to possibly have to fill that many positions? And that, that's what our job is. That's, that's our job. It's figuring out where we're at with the roster, um, taking a look at the salary cap, what we think is um, what, what, what we want to do with the cap, and you know, going and finding players and, and having you know, collaboration between the coaches and personnel, me, Rand, Chad, Ryan, anybody that can, that can help. And that's been the one thing that I've been most proud of is, you know, that everybody, um, at least from the coaching stand, I sit in there and listen and they talk and they ask them questions about the player and the coaches talk. And whether I agree with them or disagree with them, you know, they're being heard. And then, you know, ultimately, Rand and I have to have to make a, a great decision. I think last time we talked, since we talked to you last, I guess Justin Allen has been hired. I mean, mm -hmm. how good an addition is that? And where are you with the rest of your staff? Well, we're close. Um, you know, Luke. Luke wanted to go to to Chicago, um, so Luke's going to Chicago. Um, was happy for Chase to be able to to become a special teams coordinator. Knew that he probably would uh, do that when when we hired him. I want to support. You know, just and I know that you guys, you know, mention it, but you know, the whole idea is that we hire really good people, let them do their job, find ways to promote them from within when when it's earned and there's opportunity. And if we don't and we can't offer those opportunities, that we try to find those opportunities somewhere else for him. So um, speaking of Justin, you know, this was a guy that, you know, a person that started out as a special ed teacher and coached football and special ed. And, you know, the interview went really well from things that we believe about teaching and, and being creative and teaching and make a connection with players. Um, I talked to numerous players that he's coached, and that was something that they said was like, man, you know, he found a way to, to connect with me and make me uh, want to learn what we were doing. Um, had some experience with the offensive line, experience, you know, coordinating whatever capacity that was in Denver. Uh, called the last two games out there. He's a good football coach, good teacher. Told him, you know, coming in, you know, this was the spot that we had open. We had a running back spot. This is what the vision I had. Um, he turned down some other opportunities, and, and I'm really, you know, excited. Just I didn't know just Timmy and Charles and you know everybody over there on the offensive staff is excited. Did you, you give Terrell a bit? Of, did you give Terrell a, a bit of a promotion? Is that something he maybe earned uh, working with you? Uh, a little bit different title. Well, very valuable. Um, you know how I feel about Terrell and what he's meant to our program since I've been here. The consistency. Um, on and off the football field, the relationship and the connection that he's built with every defensive lineman. Um, so, yeah, I was able to, and, and rightfully so, name him assistant head coach for defense um, because that's what he is. You know, and I, I watch the players, and whether it's an offensive player or a defensive player outside of his position, you know, they have a tendency to, to find Big T or he has a tendency to find him. So, you know, he's a valuable member to our staff, and, and we're lucky to have him. What was the question? I, I think that that spot offensively, I think, you know, we will. We'll be looking. We have started to look. I just think that you need somebody in there for that can help with the run diagrams, that can help with, you know, some of the, the, the film breakdown. So, you know, we'll try to add uh, who we feel like is the best person and the best fit for that job. When you Mike, you obviously, you guys let Taylor go. Um, what, what can you say about the impact that he had on the organization just in terms of establishing – I'm a winning culture. Uh, I've spent five years with Taylor, you know, and, and I would say that I can only view, um, you know, he, he, he was injured. There was injured that, that he built, that dealt with. But I would say that his, his attitude and impact when he, when he was out there was felt 
uh, appreciated, you know, and some of those things he can't control. Um, so um, was able to play with, um, you know, a play demeanor that we certainly appreciated, whether that was um, being in Houston or, or coaching him here. So, you know, we have a, a, a really good open relationship. Um, you know, wish him the best. You know, we've had a lot of conversations. Uh, and, and like I told him, you know, see where you're at. Still want to play. It sounds like he does. We could always revisit that. But, you know, those aren't conversations that we're having right now. Is David Long's injury history for him something that maybe he could control better? And how much does it affect him as you look to maybe negotiate? Well, those are all things, you know, durability is critical. You know, durability is critical in this league. We only have so many players on the roster, and, um, and David has meant a lot to us, you know, in his development as a player. So, you know, I know that we'll have conversations with him about, uh, you know, coming back on our football team. So, everybody knows that durability in this sport is, is critical. Um, some of those things are unavoidable, um, but you know, with those are things we have to take into account. Well, it's about, um, you know, putting a staff together. There was some turnover, um, you know, ma making sure that um, my, my communication with, with Rand and, and his scouts uh, and his personnel is, is critical. I want them to be able to, to approach me and, and have conversations with me. Um, so I've really tried to, you know, foster that, whether that was to, to go down at a senior bowl um, or spend time in those draft meetings and, and leave some of the um, coaching stuff to, to Shane and, and Tim to, here in the past couple weeks uh, or week or so. But I, I felt like that was important for me to go in there, visit with them, have them talk through the board, their players in their area, the cross check, you know, really help me prepare for this week uh, as I come up here and have met with uh, some of those players last night. We'll continue to do that uh, tonight and you know, tomorrow. Like this time of year when you're meeting with prospects, there are the obvious things that you're looking for, communication skills, intelligence, confidence, but are, are there certain things in particular that you're looking for that may not be as obvious when you get to sit down with a guy? All we're looking for, all I'm looking for is authenticity. I don't want somebody that their agent thought we wanted to, to talk to or somebody that someone said they should be. You know, Who, who is that player going to be uh, in the middle of the season? You know, when they feel like it and, and maybe things aren't going great, just looking for who that person is and, you know, is there a willingness to learn? Is there a willingness to, to, to put the team first and, and do whatever is asked of them? With the holes you have front line and the depth concerns the one that you've had to deal with during the last couple of seasons, are the financial constraints that you have and six picks enough? Sure. I'm never going to say that it's not enough. I don't know any different. We're all, we're all at the same point. You know, nobody's going to win. If somebody's going to win March, and they're going to, you know, oh, they had the best free agent class. I'm pretty sure that the Chiefs didn't win March in free agency, but you know, they 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 developed and continue to improve. And um, you know, that's just I guess where, you know, we were a little different this year. I felt like we we grinded out some games. Um, you know, lost a close one here or there. But, you know, when we normally had been at our best and, and finding ways to improve, you know, we just weren't able to do it this year, which was reflective of, you know, how we finished the season. And you know, felt like maybe, if anything, we just sat down at the blackjack table a little too long. And, you know, I think probably the odds ended up not in our favor. But, you know, we know what the formula is here. And we're going to get back to work and excited about those players that will be coming in on April 17th. And then... You know, starting the off-season program and then seeing where we go in the draft. Mike, you talked about uh, Tim Kelly being the, the OC before, but and you also talked about what you want to see from the offense. Is it a matter of you just telling Tim, all right, this is what I want, or will you have a hand in helping him develop that offense? In terms well, of it's never about just what I want. I mean, I have ideas and thoughts, but, you know, that's – it's, you know, certainly – you, know, you want to do what's best for the players and what they can understand. That's the thing about coaching is great. There's no right or wrong answer. It's what you believe and what you can, you know, most importantly, get the players to believe and go out and execute 
under pressure, under duress, um, to give them answers to, to succeed versus pressure, uh, or give them answers, you know, whether it's defensively to do their job. So, um, you know, there'll be things that I'll say, hey, you know, can we – I more come in with the technique and, like, is this what we're – reasonably going to ask this player to do. I know it looks great on the board and, you know, to clinic talk, but, you know, is this something that, you know, and that goes for every position. You know, try to try to put yourself in the place of a player and say, can we reasonably expect this player to do that? It's not, maybe. not Jeff Simmons or the elite player, but, you know, can we reasonably expect, you know, somebody to do that technique? Sorry. Sorry. Is uh, having Tim now being the play caller, is that, uh, an advantageous situation for Ryan and some of the other veterans so that there's not a radical scheme change or anything? Well, I wouldn't say that there's not going to be a radical scheme change. You know what I mean? I think that that is still in a process of being built, and there'll be things that are different. That's That was part of, you know, the interview process. So I, I, I don't think that you know, there'll be some things that, that I really like and that Tim really likes and the offensive staff like that we feel like we do well. And there'll be some things that we do differently and that we'll have to do better. For Malik, you had mentioned towards the end of the year how the pace and practice mm -hmm. made his development tougher. What's next for him? How can he work his way into he, he He's already, you know, dove into the off season. He's communicated with us um, about where he's been and, and working with, with different coaches, um, with group in Jacksonville and reporting back. And it's just his demeanor. You know, walking through the building and see him in the cafeteria, you know, he understands what it's supposed to look like being a starting quarterback or being a quarterback in this league. Uh, and, and you have to be on, you know, when you when you come in the building. It's just a certain presence that you have to have. How giant is the spring this period before players report for Tim and the guys and you drawing up the playbook and how influential is that period of time once everybody shows up? Should it be in September, October? Yeah, no, it will. It'll it'll be in. I mean, we have to identify what's the best way to teach some of this stuff, Paul, is, you know, do we want to add concepts or we want to add, you know, different run schemes, pass schemes, um, you know, change the language. How do we want to install it each and every day? Uh, and, you know, is it the model of you're going to put it all in and see what sticks or you're just going to focus on uh, this first and second down package or you want to focus on a red zone. I keep going back to that. Whatever we're going to do in the red zone, we need to start doing in the spring because, you know, that's what we've done in the past. Those are some of the same plays that we're scoring on and, and helping us score, and that's where we've been efficient. Um, you know, got to identify, you know, what we're doing at the line of scrimmage. We've had pre-snap penalties and, you know, how we help Nick through some of those that, you know, whether it's just being excited about the matchup or understanding, you know, the, the cadence and, you know, going through three different quarterbacks, that's three different cadences. And maybe it's just that simple, and I don't think that it is. But, you know, we, we have to be better in some areas and, and, and you know, in our penalties and, and, and how we, you know, play the game with technique and fundamentals. Has Harold been one of the guys that's been a regular rehabbing inside the building? How optimistic are you that he'll be able to hit the ground running and change? Well, I'm never going to give you, a, you know, a, a timeline, a prognosis of it. I know he's working his tail off. He looks great from a physical standpoint. Um, so as long as he continues down that path, I, I think that will be, you know, things will be positive for him uh, whenever they say it's time to go. So he looks good. His attitude's good. Uh, I know, obviously, he was frustrated um, when it happened, but I think that the realization is, you know, that, that players can come back from, from this injury and, and be really, really good. I know Luke moved on, but is it accurate to say basically you have more voices on offense now you know, with those guys taking those spots and like hiring new people? I mean, is it, is it? Well, I don't know if there's more, more, more voices and, you know, hands on deck. I mean, Keith, Keith was very influential in the run game. I think there'll probably be more voices uh, formulating a run game. Uh, between, you know, Justin and and Haas, um, Sully, uh, Tim, obviously, you know, me. Whenever I, you know, want to put something in, I guess. But, you know, I think that was something that probably Keith managed as far as the run game. Um, so I don't think there's any more voices. You know, I think there's just new, newer, 
uh, voices, so to speak. But it's more investment, right? I mean, in that staff with Amy, right? I mean, essentially keeping those guys and then bringing in new people. Yeah. Um, I guess that that's a good way to look at it. I just was able to try to, you know, try to have a vision for the staff, see where I wanted to put guys, um, and the opportunity to get some some coaches, and um, you know, so you have to do d different things to try to get them all there. Tim, last one. Mike, uh, a little earlier you were talking about communication, the value of Rand and the staff there. What, if anything, did you learn about them that you didn't know over the last year? Oh. I, you know, I don't think that's fair to, to, you know, to say. Rand and I got a great relationship. I've enjoyed, you know, and not that I'm going to tell you about. Certainly, Cam. I think that that's. Um, I, I played for his dad. I watched his dad coach. You know, I just he does a great job of, you know, ma making people around the building, you know, feel like their job is really important. I'll say that, and I appreciate that.